let's talk about vampires. Hi peeps, my name is Hannah and you're watching Story Nut. Today I have a review for you. I am going to be reviewing Kim Newman's The Bloody Red Baron, which I mentioned in my August, September TBR that I'm reading. So yeah, I'll just get straight into it. Um, this book, as I mentioned, is um, a vampire novel, basically. It's a second book in a series of books that, um, in a series that basically reimagines the Dracula story um, from the original Bram Stoker and retells it in a way that Dracula is never really vanquished or defeated and he's still living. Um, in Anno Dracula, which is book one, Dracula, it's in the Victorian era and Dracula is in England. And in this one, which is book two, Dracula is a major force in World War II. He has aligned himself with the Germans and then the Kaiser of Germany. And he is a made like a major figure and almost like the army general of um, Germany. So yeah, um, I didn't enjoy this book as much as I enjoyed Anno Dracula. I don't know if it's just because um, Anno Dracula was the first time I read such a novel and I really liked it, but I don't know. Um, however, I actually, it's funny, I didn't enjoy the whole book as much as the first one, but I liked the characters in this book a lot more. So for example, I liked the character of Kate Reed, who is in the first book, She's Kate Reed is um, in the first book as well. She is actually um, a character who was supposed to be in the um, Bram Stoker Dracula that was cut in the early drafts. She's a friend of Lucy who is the big, like who's the female Lucy Western. Now if you've read uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula you know who she is. But yeah, she is a friend of her and of Mina Harker and those guys. And she's cut from the original novel but she's a major player in here. She's a girl who was mousy and quiet and shy and then she turns herself, she gets turned into a vampire and she kind of feels freed by that. So she's a journalist and she is super duper awesome. I like her so much. She's so always trying to find the truth and always trying to just get her nose everywhere. And um, there's a character in this book who calls her Miss Mouse, which is just so perfect because she is kind of a Miss Mouse. So yeah, I liked her and I liked that we got to see a lot more of her. She was a major character in this book and we got to see her a lot. I didn't like the other main characters so much. Like, I don't know how I feel about him. I don't know if I like him or not. Ouch. <laughs> Hitting myself with the book. Anyways, um, the other character in here is Edwin Winthrop, who is um, a general in the army. And he's not a vampire, but he is running around with the vampires and he doesn't really like them at first, but then something traumatic happens to him and he tries to make himself like vampires, but not quite turn. It's weird. And I don't know, that change in him was a bit too sudden for me. And I felt like it was almost two completely different characters. Um, the Winthrop before he tried to be vampire-like and the Winthrop after and that kind of thing. I don't know. So I didn't like that. I also didn't really like the romance in this novel. There was a no romance that just felt kind of out of nowhere. And it just almost felt arbitrary like I felt like it was added just for the sake of having a romance in the novel which I don't really like because I feel like if you're gonna have romance in a book then make it make sense like the first book Anna Dracula had a romance in it and that one made sense I didn't really like love the, the characters who were involved in that relationship but at least I thought I like it I understood it and I got it this one felt kind of forced however what I did love about this book is that like with Anno Dracula, and I think almost even more in this one, the characters were never villainized. Like, even the villains, which is the Bloody Red Baron, if you guys know anything about World War II history, World War I history, the Bloody Red Baron was a German um, pilot, because um, airplanes was fi were finally being used in the wars, and that was the first time that they used him. And he was a German pilot who was known for being really good and stuff. So in this book, he's a vampire, and there's something weird happening with the German pilots in this book. I won't spoil, spoil it, but yeah, um, they're different. And the Bloody Red Baron is painted in such an interesting way. It's not completely sympathetic, but you get to see a little bit more of him and you almost, like you don't feel bad for him necessarily, but you don't hate him completely. Like you hate Dracula, because Dracula is painted in a very negative light, so you can hate him, but the Bloody Red Baron is not painted in such a way but he's still like it's, it still makes it clear that he's a bad guy 
but he's not like he's not a horrible completely black and white kind of bad guy and then i also love the fact that this book actually edgar Allan poe who is an american novelist is actually a huge character in this book um he's a secondary character but he's, his part is pretty big and it's quite funny to just i don't know i just loved reading his um his chapters because he was just so interesting and fascinating to look at Another thing that I like about the series in general is the way vampirism is portrayed because vampirism is an intimate act almost. Like feeding and drinking blood for vampires is almost as intimate as sex. Which is a lot of the times it happens like simultaneously kind of, I don't know, it's weird. But yeah, it's an interesting way to look at it. But I, I like how, uh, I don't know if like is the right word, it was very uncomfortable to read some of the like descriptions of feeding in this book because it kind of almost like brings to mind rave culture and just abuse and that and I think that's the point and I think Kim Newman did that purposely and I think it worked really well because it makes you very uncomfortable and it makes you kind of think a lot about it and just draw similarities between vampirism and what happens in real life and predator nature and that kind of thing and just it's interesting. I, li I like that about it. I don't, it just makes you think a lot and I enjoyed that. Um, and it goes both ways, like it goes for vampires and for humans. Like you could, I felt bad for some of the vampires in this book as well because they were being treated in questionable ways. So I would recommend this book definitely to anyone who wants an interesting vampire novel read that's a bit different from the regular paranormal reads because this one is like a historical fiction vampire novel which is super interesting in my opinion. Check it out if you're interested in historical fiction or vampires because it's super good, I think. Like, with not, notwithstanding all the issues in it, it's still, it's still a pretty good read. I still had fun. So yeah, if you have read The Bloody Red Baron, please let me know down below. If you're interested in reading it and you have any questions, feel free to comment and tell me. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. You, you know, you know. If you want to. I would appreciate it and see you guys later.